Hello everybody, my name is Sophie and I'm going to be filming a medical assisting Q&A. Um, this will probably be my last MA Q&A. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I quit my job as a medical assistant. And it's not for any reason other than I wanted to focus and put my time and energy into my online boutique as well as just social media in general. So YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and then primarily the boutique. I have been a medical assistant for over three years now and it has been a great job. So I don't want this to influence anyone to not go into MA. But I do have a ton of questions. Thank you everyone who asked me questions on the anonymous question thing on Instagram. I will try to get through as many as I can without this being too long. Um, but I will just say that I didn't quit medical assisting because I hated the job or anything happened. It's just this time in my life, I'm not meant to be an MA and I might go back to it one day, so. Also, if you've been watching me for a while, this is a new location. This is my condo that my boyfriend and I live in. I don't really know where to film. We don't really have a good setup. I'm just trying to get the daylight in, but it's really overcast and cloudy today, so hopefully the quality is okay, but I'm just gonna get right into it. I have I got I got like 20 questions, which is a lot for me, so Let's just get right into it. Someone asked, favorite part of being an MA? And honestly, I really, really liked the hours. I liked that it was a Monday through Friday, no weekends, no nights, no holidays for my clinic. I didn't walk, work in urgent care or walk in. I was in the OB clinic, so we had clinic hours, which was huge. You just knew like you never had to be on call or anything, so that was my favorite part. Um, Someone said the worst part about being an MA and the pay is just not great. I will say I made less than $17 an hour after being there for three years. I started just over 14. Um, I did have benefits, so I was putting money into my 401k and everything, which is huge for a young adult, but the pay just wasn't worth it to me. And unless I became an MA again for over $20 an hour, which there are places, um, I just can't justify working for $17 an hour for that type of job. I mean, yes, that's a good amount of money for some people, but I felt like I deserved more. And I, <laughs> I'm not saying that to be like cocky or anything, but I just truly think Emmys deserve more money. Someone also asked the most embarrassing thing that happened to you at work or with a patient. And I like to think nothing too embarrassing happened, but this did happen. Um, so I work in OB, obviously, or I worked in OB, and we saw pregnant patients. So I was going through all the instructions for the glucose test, which if you don't know, around 28 weeks, you do the sugar drink, it's glucose, and it tests you for gestational diabetes. So I didn't realize this patient had type one diabetes. So I'm going through the instructions and she stops me and she goes, I can't get gestational diabetes if I already have type one diabetes. And she was not the nicest about it, but I was so embarrassed because like, I knew she had diabetes, but I didn't even think that like gestational, like I just, it didn't cross my mind that you can't get GDM when you already have type 1. So that was embarrassing. She was a nurse. Um, so every time she came in, then from 28 weeks to 40, I roomed her and I was like, oh my gosh, she probably thinks I'm so dumb. Um, so nothing like too, it wasn't too embarrassing. It was more just like, what, come on, Sophie, you're being dumb. But I'm sure other things happen, but that's just the one that sticks out. Um, what other specialty would you work in? I don't know, maybe family practice or peds, but honestly, I really liked OB. I'm passionate about, passionate about women's health and babies and all of that jazz. So I feel like I'd probably go back to OB. Um, I left my work on a good note. They pretty much said like, 
the door is always open if you want to come back one day i don't know if i would i feel like maybe i would want to try something new but i don't know i would i won't think i'd be opposed to anything um i would do endo i also might do derm that sounds a little more interesting to me than nephrology or endocrinology but probably just honestly family practice you kind of get a little bit of a lot so that's probably what i would do if i ever go back um someone also asked if you were to go back to an ma would you go to the same place and that just all depends the doctor i work with is getting close to retirement so i would definitely go back and work with him but that's probably going to be in a few years he'll retire so if i go back i don't know if he'll be there i don't know if they'll replace him i don't know if all the same employees will be there if there'll be a different group of people like i just i would have to just wait and see i wouldn't be opposed to it but i also would probably explore other options as well um, what is the biggest con of being an MA? And I kind of touched this already with pay being one of it. Um, if you're just doing it and you don't really need to support yourself, if your significant other makes a good amount of money or you're just doing it to do it, like to ha have a job, that's great. It's pretty low stress for the most part. I when i first started it was very low stress because i didn't have a lot of responsibility um but every year i worked and every time something new would come on i would take it on and it became pretty stressful towards the end and i don't mind stress like stress i think is a good thing but it's when it's kind of like stupid stress where you're like why am i even stressing over this why is this like causing me so much anxiety like that's not worth it to me and that's kind of where i was getting at towards the end um it was not enjoyable so a con would be stress like unnecessary stress and then pay um, i worked with a lot of nurses who felt like they were more important than us which yes they are rns but like we're humans too and we don't just deserve to be like s-h-i-t on so there's that um someone said can you please post a study guide or what you studied to pass the nha exam i need to pass it well good luck i if you haven't watched my ma videos in the past i took the double ama exam twice and failed so I looked into other options and found the NHA. And I'm technically a CCMA, which is a clinical certified medical assistant. And that exam was 20 questions less and so much easier. There was no insurance BS on it. It was just clinical stuff. So lab, lab questions, anatomy questions, things that actually pertain to MAs. Um, so I did post a video, I can link it down below about how I passed and I just, my biggest recommendation that I tell everyone who messages me is to get the study guide through the exam you're taking. So whether it's the AMA, I mean the double AMA, the CCMA, like whatever you're doing, there should be a study guide that you can purchase and exams that you can purchase and I know it's expensive and it might not seem worth it but I promise you it is they are laid out exactly how your exam will be and pretty much the questions are the same they're worded different obviously but they're it's going to give you a really good idea of what's going to be on your exam um, but i will say the first two exams i took were through the same organization and they were completely different tests um, i think i kind of blacked out during the second one because i was so nervous that i i did worse on the second one than i did the first and then the third one, I was like, you got to pass. And I literally, like, Jesus was on my side. I passed that one with flying colors. Um, oh, I like this question. It was, were you able to have a job while in school? And I was. Everyone I went to school with, for the most part, had a part-time job, if not a full-time job. Um, I worked as a resident assistant at a nursing home, so just like a primary or um, a personal care worker at a nursing home um, like eight 
to 16 hours a week and then I also worked at a dance studio teaching dance two nights a week for about four hours each night so I could do both school was like 24 hours a week I think and then once I started clinicals that was 40 hours a week I stopped doing the resident assistant because that was just too much and then after clinicals I would still go and do my dance teaching teaching dance um, so everyone worked it's it's doable and if you're not working honestly you're gonna be kind of like like you don't need to study all day long we're not in med school here like it, you can get your most of your work done at, at school and then you can definitely still have a life outside of school. Um, and then, would you ever consider being a teacher for medical assistant? And maybe when I'm older, like I don't know what kind of like certifications you need to be an instructor. Um, but my two instructors were amazing. I loved them. I would love to be like that type of role model for students, but not right now, not with the boutique being so busy. But that's not to say I would never do it. I feel like I would really enjoy that. I've always thought I might be a teacher one day, and then I just decided I didn't want to be a teacher. But I kind of have that like in the back of my mind, like. I think I'm good at teaching like I would always be the trainer for people at my jobs and I enjoyed it so maybe one day um, I don't believe the instructors I had were like they're not professors you just I don't know how that goes I'm sure I would have to get certified to teach or something but maybe one day I'm only 22 <laughs> um, Oh, this is also a good question. Um, were you confident confident in yourself being an MA? And at first, probably not as much as towards the end, but towards the end, I feel like I could do that job in my sleep. I ran my department, I feel like. <laughs> um, not like solely, but I had a very good grasp on pretty much everything we did. Not to say I knew everything perfectly and was like a pro, but I was pretty confident. If people had questions, I pretty much knew the answer just because doing the same thing for three years, you just get good at it. So no matter what it is, you're 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 gonna get comfortable with it. And maybe I wasn't so confident as I was comfortable. And then obviously without stepping out of your scope of practice, like you can kind of answer questions and things like that um, so giving injections like the clinical side I was very confident like drawing up medicine things like that was like a no-brainer to me I was like on autopilot while doing those things so um, if you're a new MA and you're watching this and you don't feel confident yet it will come with time it, I was only an MA for three years some people are MAs for 20 years like I can't even imagine how comfortable and confident they are. I'm gonna ask why I'm not filming anymore and I won't be filming MA content obviously because I won't be an MA um, but I'll still be filming content I just don't know exactly what and then lastly what's the best piece of advice you could give a new MA I just started four months ago the best piece of advice I could give a new MA which I told my team lead to let the new MA who fills my position is do not let other staff members walk on you because you're new or you're young or you're like fresh MA like don't let people walk on you I did I was the like youngest newest person of the clinic for a long time and people took advantage of me and just don't don't let them do that if you feel like you're being taken advantage of speak up for yourself and if you don't feel like you're being compensated for your work speak up if like just speak up for yourself advocate i didn't do that and then when i did advocate and said i need a raise and i need to go down in my hours because i'm a great worker and you guys are really lucky to have me um my clinic didn't really appreciate that they said well we don't determine your pay which i kind of understand 
I guess bigger clinics and bigger facilities um, have like certain like amounts they can pay you, which whatever. And then hours, they didn't let me go down in hours because we were short staff, but I literally said you can have me like three days a week or, or no days a week because I'm, I'm leaving if I can't go down in my hours. So I just kind of took the leap of faith and said, well, I'm, I'm done working as an MA because I can't go down in my hours. Otherwise I would have gone down and then done the boutique part-time and work part-time, but now I'm just gonna do it full-time. Um, so that's my b best piece of advice. Just advocate for yourself. And if you don't feel like you're being listened to or heard or appreciated, then that's not the place for you. Um, I know it's hard to start a new job, but I definitely think you should feel appreciated at your job. Um, that, that is all of my MA questions I received. Maybe there wasn't 20. I skipped a few because they were repeats. Um, and then some of them were just like silly questions that don't pertain to any of this. Um, so thank you so much for watching and being here on my medical assisting journey. If you do have any questions about MA, I am still happy to answer them. You can message me over on Instagram. I will link it down below. Um, or you can comment on this video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I just wanted to thank you guys for being here and subscribing and supporting me. So with all of that, I'm gonna go because now I'm rambling and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!